Hello, everyone. I hope you can see me and hear me well. All right, so um, we'll start and hope so. Oh, I see people are coming little by little. So uh, today's topic is analyzing the popular digital tools. I'm very glad to see you all today. And um, um, we will start with the opening from Google. Um, because I already talk a lot about artificial intelligence and how it's going to actually impact on tourism, on uh, digital sphere and everything in general. So the, the, the, the latest update from Google uh, will give, provide you some extra information that will be interested and then we'll start uh, our discussion. Welcome to Google I.O. It's great to see so many of you here at Showline, so many developers, and a huge thanks to the millions joining from around the world, from Bangladesh to Brazil to our new Bayview campus right next door. So great to have you as always. As you may have heard, AI is having a very busy year. So we've got lots to talk about. Let's get started. Seven years into our journey as an AI-first company, we are at an exciting inflection point. We have an opportunity to make AI even more helpful for people, for businesses, for communities, for everyone. We have been applying AI to make our products radically more helpful for a while. With generative AI, we are taking the next step. With a bold and responsible approach, we are reimagining all our core products, including search. You will hear more later in the keynote. Let me start with a few examples of how generative AI is helping to evolve our products, starting with Gmail. In 2017, we launched Smart Reply. Short responses you could select with just one click. Next came Smart Compose, which offered writing suggestions as you type. Smart Compose led to more advanced writing features powered by AI. They've been used in workspace over 180 billion times in the past year alone. And now with a much more powerful generative model, we are taking the next step in Gmail with Help Me Write. Let's say you got this email that your flight was canceled. The airline has sent a voucher, but what you really want is a full refund. You could reply and use Help Me Write. Just type in the prompt of what you want, an email to ask for a full refund, hit Create, and a full draft appears. As you can see, it conveniently pulled in flight details from the previous email. And it looks pretty close to what you want to send. Maybe you want to refine it further, in this case, a more elaborate email might increase the chances of getting the refund. <laughs> and there you go. I think it's ready to send. Help Me Write will start rolling out as part of our workspace updates. And just like with Smart Compose, you will see it get better over time. The next example is Maps. Since the early days of Street View, AI has stitched together billions of panoramic images so people can explore the world from their device. At last year's I.O., we introduced Immersive View, which uses AI to create a high-fidelity representation of a place so you can experience it before you visit. Now we are expanding that same technology to do what Maps does best, help you get where you want to go. Google Maps provides 20 billion kilometers of directions every day. That's a lot of trips. Imagine if you could see your whole trip in advance. With immersive view for routes, now you can, whether you're walking, cycling, or driving. Let me show you what I mean. Say I'm in New York City, and I want to go on a bike ride. Maps has given me a couple of options close to where I am. I like the one on the waterfront, so let's go with that. It looks scenic, and I want to get a feel for it first. Click on Immersive View for Routes, 
and it's an entirely new way to look at my journey. I can zoom in to get an incredible bird's eye view of the ride, and, and as we turn, we get onto a great bike path. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful ride. You can also check today's air quality. Looks like AQI is 43, pretty good. And if I want to check traffic and weather and see how they might change over the next few hours, I can do that. Looks like it's going to pour later, so maybe I want to get going now. Immersive view for routes will begin to roll out over the summer and launch in 15 cities by the end of the year, including London, New York, Tokyo, and San Francisco. Another product made better by AI is Google Photos. We introduced it at I.O. in 2015. It was one of our first AI-native products. Breakthroughs in machine learning made it possible to search your photos for things like people, sunsets, or waterfalls. Of course, we want you to do more than just search photos. We also want to help you make them better. In fact, every month, 1.7 billion images are edited in Google Photos. AI advancements give us more powerful ways to do this. For example, Magic Eraser, launched first on Pixel, uses AI-powered computational photography to remove unwanted distractions. And, and later this year, using a combination of semantic understanding and generative AI, you can do much more with a new experience called Magic Editor. Let's have a look. Say you're on a hike and you stop to take a photo in front of a waterfall. You wish you had taken your bag off for the photo, so let's go ahead and remove that back strap. The photo feels a bit dark, so you can improve the lighting. And maybe you want to even get rid of some clouds to make it feel as sunny as you remember it. <laughs> Looking even closer, you wish you had posed so it looks like you're really catching the water in your hand. No problem. You can adjust that. <laughs> there you go. Let's look at one more photo. This is a great photo, but as a parent, you always want your kid at the center of it all. And it looks like the balloons got cut off in this one. So you can go ahead and reposition the birthday boy. Magic Editor automatically recreates parts of the bench and balloons that were not captured in the original shot. As a finishing touch, you can punch up the sky. It changes the lighting in the rest of the photo so the edit feels consistent. It's truly magical. We are excited to roll out Magic Editor in Google Photos later this year. From Gmail and photos to maps, these are just a few examples of how AI can help you in moments that matter. And there is so much more we can do to deliver the full potential of AI across the products you know and love. Today, we have 15 products that each serve more than half a billion people and businesses. And six of those products serve over two billion users each. This gives us so many opportunities to deliver on our mission, to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. It's a timeless mission that feels more relevant with each passing year. And looking ahead, making AI helpful for everyone is the most profound way we will advance our mission. And we are doing this in four important ways. First, by improving your knowledge and learning and deepening your understanding of the world. Second, by boosting creativity and productivity so you can express yourself and get things done. Third, by enabling developers and businesses to build their own transformative products and services. And finally, by building and deploying AI responsibly so that everyone can benefit equally. We are so excited by the opportunities ahead. Our ability to make AI helpful for everyone 
relies on continuously advancing our foundation models. So I want to take a moment to share how we are approaching them. Last year, you heard us talk about Palm, which led to many improvements across our products. Today, we are ready to announce our latest Palm model in production, Palm 2. Palm 2 builds on our found fundamental research in our latest infrastructure. It's highly capable at a wide range of tasks and easy to deploy. We are announcing over 25 products and features powered by Palm 2 today. Palm 2 models deliver excellent foundational capabilities across a wide range of sizes. We have affectionately named them Gecko, Order, Bison, and Unicorn. Gecko is so lightweight that it can work on mobile devices, fast enough for great interactive applications on device, even when offline. Palm 2 models are stronger in logic and reasoning thanks to broad training on scientific and mathematical topics. It's also trained on multilingual text spanning over 100 languages, so it understands and generates nuanced results. Combined with powerful coding cap capabilities, Palm 2 can also help developers collaborating around the world. Let's look at this example. Let's say you're working with a colleague in Seoul and you're debugging code. You can ask it to fix a bug and help out your teammate by adding comments in Korean to the code. It first recognizes the code is recursive, suggests a fix, and even explains the reasoning behind the fix. And as you can see, it added comments in Korean, just like you asked. What? While Palm 2 is highly capable, it really shines when fine-tuned on domain-specific knowledge. We recently released SecPalm, a version of Palm 2 fine-tuned for security use cases. It uses AI to better detect malicious scripts and can help security experts understand and resolve threats. Another example is MedPalm 2. In this case, it's fine-tuned on medical knowledge. This fine-tuning achieved a 9x reduction in inaccurate reasoning when compared to the model, approaching the performance of clinician experts who answered the same set of questions. In fact, MedPalm 2 was the first language model to perform at expert level on medical licensing exam style questions and is currently the state of the art. We are also working to add capabilities to MedPalm 2 so that it can synthesize information from medical imaging like plane films and mammograms. You can imagine an AI collaborator that helps radiologists interpret images and communicate the results. These are some examples of Palm 2 being used in specialized domains. We can't wait to see it used in more. That's why I'm pleased to announce that it is now available in preview, and I'll let Thomas share more. <laughs> Builds on progress made by two world-class teams, the Brain Team and DeepMind. Looking back at the defining AI breakthroughs over the last decade, these teams have contributed to a significant number of them. AlphaGo, Transformers, sequence-to-sequence -sequence models, and so on. All this helps set the stage for the inflection point we are at today. We recently brought these two teams together into a single unit, Google DeepMind. Using the computational resources of Google, they have focused on building more capable systems safely and responsibly. This includes our next generation foundation model, Gemini, which is still in training. Gemini was created from the ground up to be multimodal, highly efficient at tool and API integrations, and built to enable future innovations like memory and planning. While still early, we are already seeing impressive multimodal capabilities not seen in prior models. Once fine-tuned and rigorously tested for safety, Gemini will be available at various sizes and capabilities, just like Palm 2. As we invest in more advanced models, we are also deeply investing in AI responsibility. This includes having the tools 
to identify synthetically generated content whenever you encounter it. Two important approaches are watermarking and metadata. Watermarking embeds information directly into content in ways that are maintained even through modest image editing. Moving forward, we are building our models to include watermarking and other techniques from the start. If you look at a synthetic image, it's impressive how real it looks. So you can imagine how important this is going to be in the future. Metadata allows content creators to associate additional context with original files, giving you more information whenever you encounter an image. We'll ensure every one of our AI-generated images has that metadata. James will talk about our responsible approach to AI later. As models get better and more capable, one of the most exciting opportunities is making them available for people to engage with directly. That's the opportunity we have at BARD, our experiment for conversational AI. We are rapidly evolving BARD. It now supports a wide range of programming capabilities, and it's gotten much smarter at reasoning and math prompts. And as of today, it is now fully running on Palm 2. All right, so that was a little, um, oh, one second. That was a presentation, oh, let me double, for a Google, and we can see and follow what features will be, um, give us an opportunity to use in everyday life. And we're not talking about some um, scientists, scientists or uh, business, but uh, those tools we also could use uh, to simplify uh, some some work um, on a business. Yeah, while we do business, for example, mailing, after uh, automated uh, mailing, etc. But Google, it's more personalized, and I want to bring you to this uh, little uh, page, which is evolution of tree, and just to give you an understanding, what is the AI? An artificial intelligence was intelligence was uh, trained for many years, and as you see here, from 2018, there was basically a three, uh, four trees that you can follow. Those first models were failed or not productive as we want so basically they do some analysis uh, or calculation but they do do, do have some um, issues or not or maybe they are too complicated i mean they are not that um as as developers want them so same with the tree the pink one that finished their development in 2021st they still do work in on it um but the most um uh, and profitable and uh an interesting one and the reasonable one that everyone used this is the four tree and then that tree also has a different uh algorithms that programmers uh created for them and we can see the four of the uh, main it's a bard it's a gpt4 um cloud and i barely see right now because uh but it, it's the the fourth one there is also a meta as you see and all of them are competitors so basically they have a different algorithms and those algorithms um provided to for, for free uh for use so these leads us uh, why does it okay it's here Okay. That leads us to a variety of um, artificial intelligence um, programs that the, basically the programs that use artificial intelligence. And I actually put a list of it. It's not all, it's just uh, a few. And as I said before, they are coming in every day uh, more and more. Some of them are using a uh, GPT-4, some of them are using a board, and some of them are using their own algorithms. But the whole idea is 
uh, that they still use the, the, the artificial intelligence. And here you can find as a business or as a student or whatever, uh, as an NGO or a company, um, or you just an, an influencer or you want to create your own content, here is a list of the um, programs or applications that you can use. Also divided for different categories such as uh, research, image, copywriting, presentation, automation, uh, audio, logo, startup, productivity, C CEO, design. So basically, at this point of time, uh, and again, as you see, the, the start of this um, artificial intelligence boom was in 2023. So this year, it's the year when it just, not just began, but because the GPT gives the free opportunity to use their API, uh, there is we have this variety of the programs and this this is wonderful and this is perspective for the businesses and this is an opportunity for creativity there is like a tons you can do um, unless you want it so if you are a influencer or youtuber or business you can find any tools here that automate the system so you don't need a person if, if we're talking for example for ceo you don't need a person who going to tag uh, and write down under the each, uh, each uh, page of your website how to find it, where to find it, like, you know, those um, particular rules. This is will be done, automated by artificial intelligence. Or um, let's talk about the uh, productivity. For example, you don't, um, there, there is, and there is more right now, such as, um, I'm also going to show you later on, but there's uh, such as uh, for, for productivity, you can use only one program right now that's connected to all of your social media, like a Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and then you create it with a, one of these apps, you created an image, you create a text with it for the copywriting, and then you put to that program and it's automatically will be on the, all of your social media uh, platforms without coming to each one and posting and checking and, you know, like doing the same repeating um, thing, it will be automated. So basically you can play with all of these um, programs. Some of them are uh, free, some of them are not. Some of them has have an opportunity to try um, as a four or five times or create five images or maybe like create one uh, example of presentation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also it used with a different mails. So if your friend provide you a mail, you can use uh, one more time for free. So um, let's talk about how it can impact the tourism agencies um, and not only the agencies, the businesses and tourism in general. So in the field of analyzing tourist tour can help uh, tourism agencies and businesses with data to find and offer more personalized, efficient and convenient services to travels. Here are some works and how it can uh, impact tourism. For example, this is the personalized recommendations. So artificial intelligence can analyze data about client, and we already talked about it, but I just want to repeat and give you one more um, examples. So um, analyze data and interest and previous and tra previous travelers travels. Based on this information, it can uh, recommend individual tours and interactions that match each client specifically specific needs and preferences. These can increase customer uh, satisfaction uh, and lo uh, loyalty. So also price analysis. AI can track real-time prices for trips and hotels, comparing them across various sources. This helps tourism agencies, agencies find the best deals and discounts on their clients. This is a beautiful. Uh, Chatbot and virtual assistants, uh, OK Town that I have, we are working right now on, on a chatbot that will be on many languages and also uh, provide all the information that we have on our, our website uh, to the client. That, that makes it so easy to the client um, to, to find what they want. 
So the chatbot, the tourism agency, agencies can use chatbots and the virtual assistants on their website on or messaging um, app, apps to quick response to customer inquiries and provide information about tours and travels. Demand forecasting. Um, can analyze data on season trends and patterns um, in tourism industry and later i will tell you how it possible so the artificial intelligence will actually do that uh, helping agencies also to plan for cost demand for specific destinations and services um, automation and booking payments ai can automate bookings payments process the tour in hotels reducing manual work and errors in a modern world basically technology including artificial intelligence has become an internal part of many industries and um, um, including tourism and environmental activities so the use of digital tools and, uh, and ai can significantly simplify the tasks of non-profit organizations uh, and businesses in the field of uh, green tourism in this text um well let's let's move to next part uh <clears throat> to, to to other impacts so tailored uh Itinerarius. Uh, it's an AI algorithm that analyze traveler preferences and create customized itineraries that uh, prioritize eco-friendly activities and accommodations. Also, carbon footprint calculations. Also, we mentioned it on a previous class. Uh, eco-friendly accommodations, eco-friendly transportations. Um, activities and environmental education. Let's stop, uh, just give you a few examples also. For example, drones for eco, uh, ecological monitoring. So um, the drones uh, actually can, uh, equipped with the cameras, allow tourists to observe world wi wildlife from non-invasive distance, reducing stress for animals, which is uh, uh, one of the way how we can use it for uh, tourism and green tourism. Environmental surveys. Drones can product air, um, area survey of natural areas to monitor um, deforestation, population, and also changes in ecosystem, which is amazing. We can have these uh, big fields just controlling by, uh, by the system. Search uh, and Rescue drones can aid in a search and rescue operation, ensuring visitor safety and remote eco tourism locations. Uh, the smart waste management that we um, last time we talked about IoT sensors, like a few few lectures, and IoT centers. These centers are placed in a waste bins to monitor their fill level. When a bean is uh, nearly full capacity, it target alerts to the waste collect, uh, collection and reducing litter and environmental impact. So also a data analysis uh, could be used here. The smart, smart waste system use data analysis to optimize waste collection, roads, reducing fuel consumption and emissions. Um, as an example, there is a company, uh, Big Belly, uh, a popular smart waste management system they have that used a solar powered um, compactors and uh, real uh, real time data monitoring to reduce waste uh, collection frequency. Um, for example, mobile digital platform um, eco friendly. Um, so the, these platforms, well, if we're talking about the friendly accommodation, transportation, so for accommodation, um, online booking platforms play a significant role in promoting green accommodation. And um, um, accommodation rates, they, they, they sometimes they use echo rating, which is uh, accommodation uh, will be rated 
um, based on their environmental practices, helping travelers make sustainable choices. For example, uh, Booking.com provides uh, eco-friendly um, eco-certification information for many accommodations and has eco-friendly filter uh, for search results. Uh, so this is also coming a bit popular. Also, Echo BNB, as you see um, a logo here, a platform uh, specializing in eco-friendly accommodations only. So if we go to online sources for minimizing carbon um, footprint, the websites are uh, and apps offer uh, valuable information on reducing the carbon footprint uh, to travel of travel and um, for example carbon calculations these tools estimate the carbon emission and trip suggest ways of um, offset them so for example nature conservations travel with nature which is wwf offers a carbon calculation and eco friendly uh, travel tips and they provide um, information on sustainable choices so, um, yeah, we also have uh, interactive maps, uh, which is also, uh, it could be echo, ro echo roads, uh, geolocation, trails, parks. I mean, there is a plenty you can use just, you know, uh, just a little bit of artificial intelligence and, and map and just turn on your creativity and you can show up maybe it was a new startup or a new business. And now I want you to come over close to um, to the tools that are uh, very helpful uh, also for if you start the business or you want to start the business or uh, to establish whatever um, so if we need to create the website for example there is a there is a certain tools that I'm going to um, provide provide to you today and the one is a 10 web um, .io. So there is a AI powered website building system, basically. So these uh, AI powered website building system utilize artificial intelligence to optimize the website creation process. They provide templates, tools for creating, editing, customizing website without need to deep programming our design knowledge. This system can resemble the future offered by um, TenWeb and also Durable, which is, will be the next one. So where artificial intelligence assist in con uh, content generation, layout design, and other uh, aspects of website creation, specifically an entire process and saving time. So if we're talking specifically about Ten. Uh, web.io it offers ai powered website builder that can help you create a, or recreate your website using artificial intelligence uh, providing generated content it also uh, images within a minute so it also include the elementor based editor for customization uh, additionally, it has AI e-commerce websites builder, so you can create an e-commerce, not just a landing one-page website and like more complicated one. Uh, this process uh, in, um, involves uh, answering a few simple questions about your business and AI will generate content and images based on your responses. So you can then customize uh, the content, images, layout, more pages, create layouts for any website by entering your URL. So if you have a URL already, you can try that. Uh, the other one will be a, a dur durable.co. So durable boosts the ability to generate websites also in 30 seconds. Uh, using its uh, AI powered website builder, same, uh, but also offers AI-based marketing, um, invoicing, CRM tools for business growth. So this is like even more complicated. So you already will have a CRM system that everyone um, or from your colleague could use it. And then invoicing, uh, automatic marketing, which is, I mean, makes life easier. 
you don't need to you know uh, have a different specialist um, and then have a um, developers to to do these and then see you to do that and then the the uh, SMM to do your marketing and it's all in one place so create a website you're simply enter your business type and name and AI will start working on creating your website which you can um, then customize using the website editor durable also offers the professional version where you can create clients website with a few clicks without requiring coding or designing skills and it provides easily editing tools customer custom domains and interactions for further customization so i think this is and, and this is only two examples but there is a, on a market there is much more um of those tools that uh, creates a website. So besides that we can create a website with a artificial intelligence, we can do a much, as we mentioned, a lot of different other things. And uh, this, the first one is the using AI in copywriting. So using artificial intelligence to create text, descriptions for websites also, or just to, to yourself, promote public initiatives in green tourism on uh, one of the uh, free tool that you can be used it's a gpt3 and uh, i already know that some of you are did use it which is good and which is a, a gpt uh, gpt3 uh, capable of generating text according to specified parameters and um i don't know should we go to watch it because it's I'm probably gonna skip it to, to we're not gonna watch it, but I suggest you to watch the extra video um, later on when I'll send you the the the, the lecture. I uh, just don't want to waste my time and I'm sure we're gonna divide this lecture on two uh, already because there are so many tools that I can share with you. Um, so yes, GPT3, it's the cool model that you can use, but also, GPT um, has a possibility to use custom GPT for chatbots using a content. So what does it mean for and what does it allow to business to create? They're uh, basically it's allowed to create their own chatbots using their own content. So to simplify that we have a robot and we just give him an instruction that this is my business and talk only about or this is my uh, travel agency or this is ukrainian travel uh, road i want you to talk only using this information and that's it and basically uh, the artificial intelligence going to provide any every suggestions based on information you provided or the website uh, information that you provided same so and you have a, a chatbot for clients so key features uh, of customer uh, gpt include creating a custom chatbot let me see if we have extra here no okay um, so, um, creating a custom chatbot, business can use a custom GPT to create their own chatbot. These chatbots are trained using specific content and data from the company, making them more knowledgeable about the company product, service and industry. Um, the second it would be accurate response, chatbot create using um, custom GPT uh, are designed to provide accurate and related um, response since they are trained based on the company's content. So they can answer uh, questions and provide information without the needs uh, to uh, make without the need to make up facts. And we know that GPT love to make up. So if he, he fail a lot, he fake it a lot, and he lies. <laughs> uh, so don't trust GPT uh, unless he provides you, um, you know, a source or a link. B 
because he loves to um, to just to make up information. But if you train it, this is, will be quite very useful. So also privacy and security. Custom GPT emphasizes a privacy-focused approach, which is important, especially when dealing with a, a proprietary on uh, confidential company information. Uh, also enterprise great uh, platforms. The platform is designed to meet the needs of businesses, um, offering a reliable and professional solution and customer support, information, dissemination, and other chatbot related tasks. So overall, custom GPT appears to be a tool that leverage artificial intelligence technology to create customized chatbot um, tailored to the company's own content and needs. This is will be variable sources to companies looking to enhance um, customer support, after meet responses, and provide accurate information to their customers. Um, actually, let's let's just do a little. Quieres saber cuánto vale tu coche? Rápido y fácil online. En compramostucoche.es introduces los datos de tu coche y recibes el precio de venta, no solo una estimación. Y tras una rápida comprobación en una sucursal, puedes vender tu coche. Consigue tu precio ahora en compramostucoche.es. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you the easiest way to build and chat. All right, so today we're going to be using a tool called customgpt.ai. I'll have this link down in the description below for you to go sign up. All right, so step number one is we're going to hit create our first project. All right, it's going to bring us to this page right here. Now, this entire custom trained AI chatbot is going to be built on the back of something called a sitemap. Now, a sitemap is just what it sounds like. It's a map of your website that basically gives Google or other bots or things like that kind of a map of how your website is structured together. So we need to give custom GPT a map of our website so it knows where to find all the data that it's going to train on. So for this example, I'm not going to use my website, but I have found just a local financial planner. I pulled up his website and it looks pretty solid. All right. So what we're looking for here, and this is very important. We need to give our bot content to train on. If our website or the website we are putting the bot on does not have a lot of content, the bot won't know anything. It'll be a dumb bot. So we got to feed it intelligence. We got to feed it content and information so that it can train itself up and become smart and basically usable. All right. So in this case, this website looks pretty good. There's a lot of different content on here. I think we have a few blog posts, um, which definitely help. So yeah, we have a blog here, which will be awesome to feed into our bot. All right. So you want to get something with some decent content on it. And then to get the site map, all we want to do is we want to basically grab our domain. All right. And then forward slash sitemap.xml and hit enter. And most of the time you'll be brought to something that looks like this, where we can then grab our sitemap URL. We'll copy it just like that and then paste it back in customgpt.ai. So that is how you find your sitemap. Remember, you want to find a content rich site or make sure that your site has a bunch of content. And so then we are brought to kind of the project dashboard and I'll show you what's kind of going on here right now by using the sitemap customgpt.ai is essentially finding items to feed into our bot. So here's all the items it found. Okay. So it found 369 items. You get to do a little slowly, skipping clearly, just to understand, just give you an idea how it works. See that our 369 items are getting indexed every few seconds. We can see the words that we are feeding into our bot visitors. All right. And answer their questions for us so that we don't have to. So we'll just let this run until all of our items are indexed. Okay. So our bot is done training. Let's hop in now and test it out and make sure that it kind of digested all the information that we just fed into it. So we'll hit ask me anything. Now remember this website we're on is like a financial advisor website. So wealth management. So I'm going to ask it something like, Hey, I just graduated college with a bunch of student debt. Should I pay this down fast? Let's see what it says. All right. So the bot's thinking. And we'll see what it gives me. 
Yes, it's recommended to develop a plan to pay off your student loans over a certain amount of time. It's beneficial to start with your high interest rate loans first and work your way down the list. Perfect. So we now have a cut. So this is just an example how um, how custom GPT uh, GPT for chat box using um, using the content. And oh, let me come back to the full screen. So. There is another tools that I also want to talk today that this is um, so if custom GPT is just uh, uh, the, the one of the application that use the GPT um, algorithm. So there is a GPT an open GPT and I also uh, add the links and everything else here uh, you can use. Uh, for your business. So first I'm going to talk about more complicated stuff and then we'll go to the easiest one. So GPT for a business that you can use, uh, probably you're going to use with the API. And you can use the API to create your own text tasks, receive responses from the Model 3. Uh, from the Model 3. Basically here is the general process to create and interacting with a GPT API. The first, this is access in GPT uh, API. First, you need to gain an access. So if you are the business and you want to gain um, with a, um, artificial intelligent uh, access, maybe I'm not going to tell you all uh, details, just going to uh, go over you um, so you can read after it more detailed. But basically, uh, you're going to get the, the access and that access using the API key, you can send requests to generate text answers and etc. And then you your request should include the textual task or questions to which you want uh, a response from GPT model and also receiving responses. So uh, the next uh, uh, tool that I want to talk today, it's also predict um, uh, HR, uh, HQ, I'm sorry. So it is the platform specializing in for uh, casting and analyzing events that uh, can impact businesses and industry uh, industrial activities. The platform provides companies and enterprises with data on events such concerts, sports, event, conferences, weather conditions, and other that can influence demand and market activities. So key features and cap um, capabilities of these um, of this tool. So event data uh, aggregation. That's mean that Predict HQ collects and aggregate data from various sources, including social media, websites, media, um, official events, listening, covering wide range of events types. Um, then event impact forecasting. The platform utilize analytical method and artificial intelligence model to forecast the impact of events on demand that they are key businesses metrics. So this is the, the very difficult aggregator. Uh, providing insights, so Predict HQ provides users with insights and analytical data to assist them in design, uh, decision making uh, related or to sources planning, marketing, inventory, management and other aspects on operations. Well, probably these ones are more useful for uh, United States but at the same time, we um, sure there will be soon some uh, some of those tools like um, in Ukraine. So also applicable across industries. Predict HQ can uh, be evaluated in various industries, including the hotel industry, retail, transportation, logistics, financials, and more. So platform basically helps businesses um, understand and plan for events that can impact their operations um, and make strategic decisions to achieve better outcomes across wide range and in industries and scenarios. The other one is uh, Play um, HT. So now they are coming for uh, 
le less useful for business, but it could be used for uh, social media, for marketing. Uh, so it's a PlayHT is a platform that offers text to speech um, and a voice cloning service. So uh, it is primarily used for um, converting text-based uh, content into spoken audio. Here are uh, some common use cases. Um, so voice voiceovers for content. For example, uh, PlayHT uh, can be used to create voiceovers uh, for various types of content, such as a video, podcast, e-learning courses, audiobooks. So you don't need to read them. Uh, it will be created for you. Content creators can convert written speakers into natural source uh, sourcing audio using different voice options. And let me provide you also an example, and then we can go. Die Menschen, die jetzt im Augenblick hier sind, brauchen angesichts der Situation in Syrien jetzt auch keine Angst zu haben. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. A pack of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. İstanbul'un fethi ve Ayasofya'nın cami haline dönüştürülmesi hadisesi tüm tarihinin özellikle be mindful of the potential consequences of using clone voices and always use them in a way that is fair and ethical. של מנהיגים עולמיים ממדינות רבות. 25 מדינות כבר הביעו תמיכה חזקה בישראל. I always felt like I was living in someone else's shadow. But now I see that I was simply ahead of my time. So uh, this was an example, basically, how they um, use one simple short version of audio converted to different languages, which is simplified everything. You can create the whole uh, whole, whole text and uh, translate it to any language you need without uh, asking a translation translator. So also um, chatbot and virtual assistant, also uh, PlayHT, um, technol this is TTS technology, can be integrated into chatbots. So and virtual assistants to provide a more natural and engaging conversational experience for users. For example, I know in the United States there is a there is a companies that use um, automated um, answers. Um, also, they could be uh, you know in a different languages. You, they can use a voice of one of the uh, worker. I mean, there's a mass of options. Uh, interactive voice responses, which is uh, IVR systems. A business can use PlayHT to generate voice prompt and messages uh, for their IVR system, enhancing the customer service experience. So smart, smart responses, right? Voice cloning. PlayHT offers voice uh, cloning cap uh, capabilities, allowing users to create custom AI-generated voices for specific applications, like personalized virtual assistant or characters uh, for video games. Uh, multilingual content, it supports multilingual content and accents, making it useful for creating audio content in various languages. Um, yeah, so basically how it works, um, you you, also, you can use your 30 seconds of voice and download it and then provide just a paper of text that will be written with your voice that you 30 seconds provided. So it's going to clone your voice. And if you uh, saw the video, um, this video here, uh, it, I use not my voice. This is clone voice um, that I give provide 30 seconds. They just clone it. I provide text. They use the text. Uh, the next one that also related to the this video uh, that I created for this uh, program, uh, it also a tool that called I, uh, DID uh, Studio. DID Studio Creative Reality. It's a studio, it's basically a platform that 
unlock the potential uh, for creating professional videos using traffic, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, using a uh, static image and text or audio guided by artificial intelligence. So this program, I, I also did all the links so you can, you know, um, later on you can come over and just uh, link uh, everything and see if, if you want to try something because the, if I'm going to show you how it works, it's going to take so much more time uh so basically idd you have already um a simple one the assistance here the pictures that you can use or you can use your own picture same as we did use here so i used my own picture and then this picture was animated uh with a text that was provided and with an audio made from a different program. So basically, uh, it could be used, um, this innovation tool can be beneficial for businesses and non-governmental organizations for various purposes. You can create your instructions, you can create your interactions, you can create your courses, you can, I mean, there's mass. Um, it could be presentational videos. Business can utilize um, to create videos presentation on their products and services using photographs and audio recordings. Advertising campaigns, the tools provide uh, DID Studio allows to create a realistic advertisement videos with avatar that can speak presented a uh, product or service which can uh, distinguish the company uh, in the market too. So educational resources, right? So educational institution, uh, create educational video or tutorials. Uh, there is ISO, um, some certain of these types on uh, Coursera, um, which is very, very comfortable. You have a blank background and you just follow the, whatever they are uh, teaching you. Um, social media and marketing, engaging video content for social media can be easily created, um, enabling audience uh, engagement and enhancing online presence, right? So, um, assembling pricing, assembling pricing with two pricing plans, uh, live and advanced, make its platform assemble for different budgets. Uh, which can be useful for nonprofit organizations, again, small businesses, uh, economical solutions for video content creation, and also new functionalities, regular um, updates and new features provided by IDT Studio allowed users to maximize the platform capabilities for improving their creative projects. So overall, Studio offers uh, flexible, and innovative solutions for a video um, and um, how did I say this is the, the <laughs> let me see how it how it called um, <laughs> ah, avatar yeah creating your personal avatar for your business or in general um, oh you can be your avatar Okay, uh, so I'm not going to play this one, um, just you can do it later on. Also, I want to stop on um, this um, program called DocuAsk. So what is DocuAsk for? DocuAsk is a digital platform designed to facilitate documents and uh, document analysis and management which could be uh, liberated by businesses and non-governmental organization for various purposes again uh, for example document analysis and alignment so the platform for users uh, docwask provides a platform for users to um, effortlessly analyze and align documents across different languages it helps it discovering connections and disconnection within documents, which can be beneficial for multinational uh, businesses and NGO operating on multilingual environment, um, content organization. 
So users can upload documents in a variety of uh, formats, such as text, documents, Word, PDF, I mean, all of the uh, all of the varieties. And uh, this feature can significantly aid the managing and vast amount information eff uh, effectively. So question and answers um, also going through all of your documentation and barely uh, it, um, it, it can give you all of the questions on answers uh, that you have. So it provides the functionality for the company. This is very good for, for businesses, for NGOs, for even for students who keep their lectures. Um, so um, also enhancing relevance and context, uh, contextual understanding. Basically, uh, the tool aids in enhancing their relevance uh, and contextual understanding of the documents uh, by analyzing them in different languages. These features can be particularly useful for legal uh, or official um, documents where contextual understanding is crucial. Uh, chatbot uh, creating, again, the, the you, um, same functions could be used here by um, providing the documents that you want to be uh, your uh, chatbot being created cross-language capacities. Um, you can translate it or handle documents on any language. Uh, can be game changer for global operations, making information assemble for understanding to, to, to your partners, for example. So in conclusion, uh, Doku Ask can serve and robust tool for businesses uh, and analyze their documents for international and external communication, automating certain processes, chatbot creation, um, and basically potential saving time and resources. All the documents will be just in one, um, one um, source that you can ask him a question and easily find them. And basically a game changer for today uh it's an open ai and we talk just today a little bit about gpt that was created um gpt3 and also uh, custom gpt but it's a different one so gpt and gpt api that can be connected to your business um by api but also um i want you to show you a uh, a little video about updates that happened to um, to GPT lately. Second. Okay. Okay. Perdón. But let's enhance this app by adding a very simple assistant to it. This is the screen. We're going to come back to it in a second. First, I'm going to switch over to the new assistant's playground. Creating an assistant is easy. You just give it a name, some initial instructions, a model. In this case, I'll pick GPT-4 Turbo. And here, I'll also go ahead and select some tools. I'll turn on Code Interpreter. And that's it. Our assistant is ready to go. If I say, hey, let's go to Paris. All right, that's it. With just a few lines of code, users can now have a very specialized assistant right inside the app. So here, if I carry on and say, hey, what are the top 10 things to do? We're gonna have the assistant respond to that again. And here, what's interesting is that the assistant knows about functions, including those to annotate the map that you see on the right. And so now all of these pins are dropping in real time here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And that integration allows our natural language interface to interact fluidly with components and features of our app. And it truly showcases now the harmony you can build between AI and UI, where the assistant is actually taking action. But next, next let's talk about retrieval. And retrieval is about giving our assistant more knowledge beyond these immediate user messages. In fact, I got inspired and I already booked my tickets to, uh, to Paris. So I'm just gonna drag and drop here this PDF. What it's uploading, I can just sneak peek uh, at it. Very typical United flight ticket. And behind the scene here, 
what's happening is that retrieval is reading these files and boom, the information about this PDF appeared on the screen. And this is of course a very tiny PDF, but assistants can parse long form documents from extensive text to intricate product specs, depending on what you're building. In fact, I also booked an Airbnb, so I'm just gonna drag that over to the conversation as well. But just because OpenAI is managing this API does not mean it's a black box. In fact, you can see the steps that the tools are taking right inside your developer dashboard. So here, if I go ahead and click on threads, this is the thread I believe we're currently working on. And see, like these are all the steps, including the functions being called with the right parameters and uh, the PDFs I've just uploaded. But let's move on to a new capability that many of you have been requesting for a while. Code Interpreter is now available today in the API as well. That gives the AI the ability to write and execute microphone. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, I just said that uh, eventually it started from the middle, <laughs> not from the beginning, but I also see that we're getting ahead of time. Uh, so probably uh, we still have one more lecture on the, the, the, the next lecture. There will be the last one. So I'll provide you this video with uh, all the features that OpenAI and GPT chat is have, even though I'll show you how it works in real time uh, because I have one. Uh, and we just will uh, talk and continue uh, our conversation, uh, our lecture on next next one so for today uh, that's it i provide a few links also that are quite interesting about the google uh the um, data analysis and uh etc other uh, links that you can check so please check them and basically for today uh that's it i'm happy to see you next time next lecture will be the last one so please visit it uh, just to have your points and have the certification a certificate at the end and also i will send you a, a form that you need to sign um, <clears throat> and evaluate the lectures that's it thank you so much and have a great day